after studying this module, you shall be able to know about the classification of thermal injuries, to understand what are burn and its classification, to learn about the cause of death in burn injuries and analyze post-mortem changes and medical legal aspect of burn injuries. Thermal injuries are the injuries produced by the exposure of body to extreme soft temperature and may be classified into basic two categories the injuries due to high temperature and injuries due to low temperature. Now injuries due to high temperature are called as which are produced by the heat. They can be further divided into two depending upon the effects which is produced that is the generalized or localized. Generalized effects of heat are heat stroke, heat hyperparaxia, heat cramps also called as minor cramps, heat exhaustion. Whereas the localized effect of heat include the burns which are produced due to dry heat and the scalds which are produced due to the moist heat. The injuries due to low temperature or you can say by the cold again can be divided into two the generalized effect of the cold as well as the localized effects of cold. The generalized effect of cold are called as hypothermia. The localized effect of cold can be further divided into three that is chill blain, frost bite and the trench foot also called as immersion foot. Now coming on to the generalized effect of heat. They are produced when the victim is exposed to abnormal hot environmental conditions like which is prevailing in our country most of the times almost 8 months of the year we have that heat. These conditions although frequent but not of much medical legal significance as the attending circumstances are self explanatory. The importance lies in the fact that such cases owing to their presenting symptoms may be mistaken as meningitis. Another medical legally important situation may arise in cases of death occurring in mine workers in which question of compensation arises. Of course, there is a separate act that is workman compensation act which deals with that. Now coming on to the specific type that is heat stroke. In this there occurs failure of thermoregulatory mechanism in body leading to the sudden unconsciousness hence, this, hence the name is stroke. It may further lead to fatality in a span of 5 minutes or may be delayed up to 3 days. It is seen usually when a person is exposed to direct sunlight during summer for a considerably long period. The onset is usually sudden with symptoms like headache, nausea, vomiting, feeling of exhaustion with lethargy, weakness in limbs and excessive desire for micturition that is passage of urine. The face is flushed with dry hot skin because of the impaired sweating. The pupils are contracted and may be even pinpointed and they have got the sluggish light reaction. The core body temperature may rise up to 43 degrees centigrade or we can say 109 degrees of Fahrenheit. The pulse becomes irregular, respiration is labored and the person develops oliguria that is the uh, scanty urine. The person becomes delirious and may have convulsions before being comatosed. The second condition is the heat hyperparaxia. Some say that hyperparaxia with heat stroke but both are different entities. Heat hyperparaxia occurs because of the malfunctioning of the thermoregulatory center and not the failure in which the body temperature exceeds 41 degree centigrade that is 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Other than environmental factors, hyperparaxia may be associated with overdose of certain drugs like atropine, amphetamine and substances of abuse like cocaine. Several anesthetic agents like halothane and muscle relaxants like saxamethonium, they have been lodged against the anesthetic surgeons in the countries like USA and UK. The third situation is the heat cramps also called as miners cramp or the fireman's cramp. There occurs excessive loss of salt or water or both by way of perspiration, the painful spasm of the voluntary muscles with flushing and dilatation of the pupil is seen. It is usually slow in onset and non-fatal. 
the fourth condition is the heat exhaustion or the heat collapse or the heat prostration it is a condition of collapse that is effect of heat over circulatory system without any rise of body temperature and usually seen following exposure to hot and humid atmosphere the characteristic feature is prostration accompanied by evidence of peripheral vascular failure like hypotension paler and poor venous return the patient recovers soon and lethality is unusual due to sudden failure of heart all the mentioned condition all these four are frequently encountered in person working in mines furnace bakeries sugar laundries etc and soldiers on march alcoholism hunger lack of sleep fatigue further disposes a person to these generalized effect of heat the treatment is basically the victim or the person should be removed immediately from the hot environment to a cooler place water should be given orally if possible hydrotherapy should be started at the earliest so as to bring down the body temperature and the intravenous fluid should be given with monitoring of electrolyte imbalance mainly the sodium which is imbalanced and produces the condition of hyponatremia if the poor fellow dies during the post mortem findings there are no specific findings except the body is dry and the post mortem calorosity that is also appreciable only during the early period the rigor mortis starts early as well as passes off early all internal organs are congested and petechial hemorrhages may be found on lungs and medical legal importance deaths are usually almost always accidental in manner coming on to the localized effects of heat various factors which determine the effect of heat produce they include intensity or the degree of heat the period of contact or the duration the material used for the transmission of heat and the nature of heat that is dry or moist so these are the four factors which determine the effects taking one by one the more the intensity of the heat the greater is the damage minimum 45 degree temperature is required to produce any visible damage however temperature of 60 degree centigrade will produce injury instantaneously duration of contact is directly related with the visible damage the hot metals or the glass produces more damage in comparison to the flame heat the damage produced by dry heat that is burns and moist heat that is scalds they are they vary greatly in appearance and they will be discussed further here burns which is the most common one it is defined the legal definition of burns is injury produced in the body by application of dry heat like flame fire heated substance or radiant heat however section 324 and 326 of indian penal code specifies any hurt or grievous hurt which is caused by fire or any heated substance or corrosive or explosive substance and that is punishable more severely in comparison to unspecified means the usual circumstances under which a person sustains burn injuries are catching of fire by clothes worn by the victim while doing household chores like cooking on a gas stove or kerosene oil stove of course nowadays they are being phased out but still we see the cases from the villages to know the extent of burn injuries various scientists have classified them into various ways the commonest is the wilson's classification and according to this uh, it categorizes into three types depending upon the body layer involved these are epidermal dermo epidermal and deep so these three are the varieties of the or you can say types of the burn as per the wilson's classification in epidermal burn injuries there occurs reddening or the erythema and blister formation and these blisters contain serum which is rich in protein and chlorides and are surrounded by a zone of hyperemia that is called as red line these are very painful and heal without any formation of a scar second is the dermo epidermal when full thickness of skin is involved in burn injury including hair follicles sweat and sebaceous glands these are extremely painful due to involvement of sensory nerve endings 
and heal with the formation of scar due to damage of all layers of skin. Third is the deep burn injuries. When deeper tissues below skin are involved, namely subcutaneous tissues, muscles and bones etc., they are relatively less painful owing to the destruction of nerve endings and heal with scar and contracture formation. Thus, they cause much disfigurement and loss of function of the part of body involved chiefly when near a joint. The second classification is the Dupuytren's classification according which is according to the depth of tissue involved he classified the burn injuries into six categories that is one to six first second third fourth fifth sixth first degree when we call it the first degree when low degree heat is applied for a very short duration there occurs an erythema or redness over the area of contact it remains painful for a day or two and the redness fades in a few hours or a day the covering superficial layer of epidermis may get devitalized and shed off in few days the second degree here the epidermis is affected completely and there occurs blister formation surrounded by a zone of hyperemia the blister contains serous fluid which is rich in protein and chloride these are very painful and if extensive they also produce hypovolemic shock they usually heal in one week without any scar formation may rupture and get infected as well third degree here the epidermis is completely destroyed with the involvement of dermis there occurs blister formation with red line they ulcerate and may get infected and are extremely painful they heal with the formation of a scar in fourth degree whole thickness of the skin is involved they are not much painful because destruction of all the nerve endings have occurred and usually it is followed by sloughing after some days the fifth degree burns here the depth of lesion extends further and subcutaneous tissue is involved these are less painful again owing to the total destruction of sensory nerve endings and these heal with deep scarring produce contractures and when close to a joint seriously hamper the movement at joint the sixth degree in this muscles and bones are also involved there occurs charring of the limb and heal with much difficulty and contracture formation the third classification is given by hebras and according to this the burn injuries can be categorized into three only by clubbing together the injuries as classified by dupuytrens that means epidermal dermoepidermal and deep first and second degree comprise the epidermal burns the third and fourth dermoepidermal and fifth and sixth the deep burns now coming on to the factors which affect the prognosis of burns the first and foremost is the body surface area involved which is the most important parameter which affect the prognosis in case of a burn injury to estimate the body surface area involved we use rule of nines as was given by the alexander valles and this is basically for calculating the amount of fluid what we called as ration which is to be given to the injured adult person and also helps in knowing the prognosis of the injury the rule of nine basically the various parts of the body are are given as a percentage of nine what are those head and neck is given as 9% the front of chest is given as 9% back of chest is given as 9% front of abdomen back of abdomen right upper limb whole the left upper limb the front of right lower limb the back of right lower limb the front of left lower limb front of back of the left lower limb so that comprises of 11 parts so 11 nines are is 99 1% is given for the perineal area that is area surrounding the genital organs perineal or pudendal area that is given as 1% so total is the 100% however for calculating the percentage of body surface area in children practically we apply rule of 5 instead of rule of 9 because that is more appropriate 
because of the body surface area of the uh, distribution of the child. According to this, the body can be divided into five parts and each has been assigned as 20 percent. Head and neck 20 percent, abdomen is 20 percent, chest is 20 percent, upper limbs are 20 percent and lower limbs of are 20 percent. So, that is 100 percent. Now, head and neck also this can be divided into four parts front and back lower uh, the right half and up left half and likewise abdomen, chest, upper limbs and lower limbs. So, that is 5 percent each for each part each side. The total is 100 percent. Roughly in or you can say in scattered burn injuries the simply we apply the rule of palm. According to this the surface area of the palm of the victim is approximately 1 percent of the total body surface area. Generally speaking involvement of about 33 percent that is one third of the total body surface area has got a very grave prognosis and about 50 percent involvement of total body surface area is expected to be fatal in the our circumstances. However, uh, with recent advances in the treatment modalities this may improve. The second parameter is the depth of the burn injuries. Deeper the burns, difficult is the healing process gives, giving rise to more complications. Superficial burns will produce more pain thereby causing neurogenic shock whereas in deep burns although pain is less but hypovolemia is much more. So, when we talk about the prognosis or fatality the body surface area involved is more important than depth of the burn injury. Third factor is the site of burn injuries. Burns on neck, chest and abdomen have grave prognosis and over perineal region although it constitutes only 1 percent but then that has got the worst prognosis. Age of the victim is another parameter. The victims in extreme age groups are vulnerable to lethal complications and they succumb easily. For example, in case of children about 20 percent of burns have been found to be fatal in contrast to the adult where up to 50 percent burns are found to be fatal. It also depends upon the sex of the victim. Males can cope up burn injuries better than the females. Intensity of heat that is also one of the very important parameter. More the intensity of heat the greater is the damage produced. A minimum temperature of 45 degrees is required to produce burn injury though the time needed will be few hours. However, a temperature of 60 degree centigrade produces effect of burns in few minutes and a temperature of about 1000 degree centigrade will completely incinerate the body in about an hour. Then the duration of exposure, the longer the duration of contact or exposure to heat the severer will be the burns produced. Now coming on to the causes of death in burn injuries what could be they have been further categorized into various types immediate causes, early causes, late causes. So, we will take one by one. Immediate causes again are further divided into neurogenic shock, suffocation as well as due to injuries. Neurogenic shock here the death may occur within few hours due to severe pain especially in extensive superficial burn injuries. Second type is the cause is the suffocation. Here the death may occur due to inhalation of smoke, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide and other irrespirable gases during conflagration. Cases are frequently encountered in our situation where practice of lighting angiti during winter season inside the room is prevalent because it burns slowly and because of the incomplete combustion of coal carbon monoxide and smoke are produced. So, person while sleeping gradually inhales and succumbs to the suffocation. Simultaneously the cotton quilt which a person wraps to cover himself this accidentally catches fire with slow burning angiti. 
and it leads to production of huge amount of irrespirable gases and the person dies due to suffocation. Similarly, if a person tries to commit suicide by pouring kerosene oil over himself, the smoke might enter into the respiratory passage and thus person dies due to combination of suffocation and shock. The third immediate cause may be injuries. The victim dies while attempting to escape from the site of fire and during that he sustains injuries from the falling structure of building or hitting an object. Coming on to the early causes of death, they are further divided into three hypovolemic shock, pulmonary edema and the electrolyte imbalance. The hypovolemic shock here the death occurs within 24 to 36 hours due to loss of fluid from the burnt surface and more than half of the fluid loss is fatal immediately. The second is the pulmonary edema. Death occurs in a day or two due to pulmonary edema, glottic edema or laryngeal edema, all the various internal neck structures. Then electrolyte imbalance. There occurs mainly hypokalemia that is the lesser level of the potassium ions and this lead to death in early period after sustaining the burn injuries. Then third are the late causes or the delayed causes. They are further divided into toxemia, septicemia, renal failure, gastrointestinal ulceration, anemia and hypoproteinemia. So these are the various possibilities as the time progresses. Toxemia. There occurs systemic absorption of various toxins in blood which are produced at the ulcerated areas after burns and death is due to shock as a result of toxemia usually within 36 to 48 hours. In septicemia, the signs of systemic infection usually appear by 48 hours after sustaining the burn injuries. So most of deaths occurring after 48 hours are due to the infection of serous membrane and internal organs like meningitis, pneumonitis, pericarditis, peritonitis, pleurisy and other complications. Then renal failure. There occurs acute tubular necrosis which leads to lead renal failure and death, death occurs usually around third or fourth day due to renal failure. Then gastrointestinal ulceration. Initially there occurs ulcer formation in stomach due to prolonged confinement and this is called as Dupuytren's ulcer. Afterwards ulcer may also be formed in duodenum, which is called as curling's ulcer and these are basically the late complications of burn injuries produced as a result of local stress as well as local ischemia and person may succumb to death when there occurs uncontrollable bleeding from these ulcers. Then anemia and hypoproteinemia. The victim may die even after weeks as it develops these complications over a period of time. In case of death due to burns, now what are the post-mortem changes? What will be the external findings and what are the internal findings? Externally, the body must be carefully examined because remnant of clothing especially if the synthetic one this may got stuck on the body parts where they are tightly placed. So they should be removed very carefully and examined for the presence of any inflammable substance like kerosene, petrol etc. And even if no smell is perceivable they should be preserved and sent to concerned forensic science laboratory as they can be chemically identified. While preserving the clothing, an extra precaution is to be taken by putting them into glass container first and then sealing them before handing over to the police official. The reason for it is that mostly inflammable materials are volatile substances and simply preserving them in a sealed cloth will defeat the very purpose of preservation. So hence this precaution is needed to put in the glass containers. In internal findings, the nasal and oral cavities may show presence of the carbon suit and they are inflamed 
and these suits are often mixed with the mucus and adhered on the wall of lumen of respiratory tract as below as lumen of bronchioles. Mucosa over tongue and larynx may be edematous and show blistering. Due to presence of excessive amount of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide which produces asphyxiant effects, the tissue may assume bright red coloration owing to excessive amount of carboxyhemoglobin. So the blood in the vessels will look bright pink or red, thick and more fluid. All the internal organs are congested, lungs are deeply congested and edematous. And the mucosa of upper GIT, if the person has uh, survived for considerable time, this is reddened and may show ulcer formation as discussed earlier, curlings and dupuytren ulcer. One condition which needs to be differentiated here is the heat hematoma. Due to intense heat, what happens? The capillary wall may get damaged and blood oozes out in the extradural space of the skull and this is deposited as a firm friable and cherry red or chocolate red colored clot and it has got honeycomb in appearance. This is because of the vaporization of the liquid part of blood consequent upon boiling of blood by intense external heat. It is usually present over the side opposite to the site of greatest damage that is occipital and frontal regions. It is a postmortem phenomena and therefore must be differentiated from antemortem extradural hemorrhage. So this should not be confused with that hematoma, heat hematoma with the extradural hemorrhage. Most important findings are to be observed in the respiratory passage and blood which will be extremely clinching towards the fact that the, whether the victim was alive when the fire commenced. The tongue, the larynx, the trachea, the tonsils and the bronchi are usually inflamed and they contain soot often mixed with mucus. If the deceased has inhaled very hot gases or fumes, then the mucosa over the tongue and larynx may be edematous and exhibits the blistering or the shredding. Sometimes some vomitus may also be present in the respiratory passages. The carpon impregnated mucus may be swallowed and found in the esophagus or may be in the stomach. Together with the suit, the inhaled smoke usually contains some carbon monoxide which is therefore absorbed by the blood. So the presence of carbon monoxide in the blood is often obvious from the bright pink appearance of the blood, the muscles and even the cut surface of the organs. Now coming on to the medico legal aspects of burn injuries. The question which usually arises in such deaths whether are the death is due to burns and what is the manner of death that is whether it is a suicide, accident or homicide. So whether the victim was alive at the time of burning or dead, that is ascertained by antemortem or postmortem nature of burns. The point which help in differentiating these antemortem and postmortem are the presence of red line in the adjacent normal skin to the burn area, which will be there only in the antemortem burns. The presence of blisters which contain a serous fluid comprising of albumin and chloride and on puncturing it will show red inflamed base surrounded by a zone of erythema or hyperemia. Presence of a smoke in the respiratory passage. This indicates the victim inhaled a smoke and was alive when fire is spread. So the presence of soot over mouth and nostrils, they does not have any diagnostic value, right. So it should be inside the respiratory tract. The quality of soot inside respiratory passage depends upon the type of fuel, combustibility of fuel, type of article burned and of course the period of survival of victim. If the person has survived for a considerable time of considerable time, then we may not find any soot. Then laryngeal edema which is caused by passage of hot gases into respiratory tract. The raised carboxyhemoglobin level in the blood which is exceeds 10%. And of course, in chain smokers, we may get a blood level of up to 8 to 10 percent. So in that situation, it needs to be carefully 
interpreted. Histological investigation revealed the same changes as occur in the other injuries. To summarize the topic, thermal injuries are the injuries produced by exposure of body to extremes of temperature. The heat hyperparaxia occurs because of the malfunctioning of thermoregulatory center and not the failure where the body temperature exceeds 41 degrees centigrade. The localized effect of heat produces burns due to dry heat and scalds due to moist heat. The more the intensity of heat, the greater is the damage caused and the minimum 45 degree temperature is required to produce any visible damage. However, temperature of 60 degree centigrade will produce the injury instantaneously and rule of 9 is applied to no body surface area involved in cases of burn in adults whereas in children rule of 5 is applied. More than 50 percent of the burns lead to fatality and the cause of death varies depending upon survival period of time from suffocation to anemia and hypoproteinemia along with the various types of shock like hypovolemia, toxemia, septicemia.